members. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Councillor Bradnam, and I'm the chair of this committee, uh, the Joint Development Control Committee. I'd like to welcome you uh, to this meeting taking place at 10.30 a.m. on Wednesday, the 26th of January. Other members of the committee are Councillors uh, Bajant, Chamberlain, Daunton, Horror, Smart, Simon Smith and Thornborough. And we have some additions and some subtractions today. So we have apologies from Councillor Bygott and he is being substituted by Councillor Howell. We have apologies from Councillor Hawkins and Councillor Hunt, and we have um, substituting Councillor Fane. Uh, we also have Councillor Gawthrop Wood, I believe, attending virtually, who will be able to speak, uh, but not to vote. Thank you. Uh, we also have apologies from, sorry, Councillor Paige Croft. You've got all that. The officers permanently at the table for this meeting are Assistant Director of Delivery, Sharon Brown, the Legal Advisor, Keith Barber, the Committee Manager, Claire Tunnicliffe, and our producer, Boris Herzog. Other officers and public speakers will join us throughout the course of the meeting, and I'll introduce them at the start of the relevant agenda items. So, on to housekeeping, folks. Forgive me, this is quite a long uh, introduction. So copies of the agenda can be found on the City Council's website under committee meetings, minutes and agendas. Please try and refer to the page and paragraph numbers within the agenda if you're referring to a specific paragraph or plan. Please ensure that you've switched off or silenced any other devices you have so that they do not interrupt proceedings. When you're invited to address the meeting, Please make sure that your microphone is turned on, and when you finish addressing the meeting, please turn off your microphone immediately, but speak slowly and clearly, bearing in mind that internet links are not always brilliant, and please do not talk over or interrupt anyone. Please can those present in the council chamber note that everything on your desk, including your laptop screen, may be broadcast at some point. The camera follows the microphone being switched on, so councillors and officers are requested to wait a couple of seconds before speaking to allow the camera to catch up. And please raise your hand if you wish to speak. And indeed, if Councillor Gawthrop Wood could raise her electronic hand, officers will look, keep an eye out for you. Please can those participating in the meeting via the live stream indicate if you wish to speak uh, by raising the hand Please don't use the chat column uh, today um, unless we're not making contact, but otherwise, please don't use the chat column. Please make sure that your device is fully charged and that you switch your microphone off unless you're invited to speak. Please can meeting participants keep their microphone and cameras turned off until we come to the application we have registered you to speak about. If a report officer drops out from the committee due to poor broadband signal, the senior officer present will take over their presentation or report and will respond to questions. So the process for each planning application will be that the case officer will give a brief introduction to the report. Registered public speakers will be invited to have their say. There will be three minutes for those speaking in support and three, three minutes for those speaking against, unless I've advised otherwise. Um, actually, I, um, public speakers will be unable to join in with the councillor debate. The committee will then discuss or debate the item and may ask questions of the case officer. At the end of the deliberation, I will ask members to vote on the officer's recommendation by show of hands. And before we proceed any further, for the benefit of anyone watching the meeting online who's interested in agenda item five, which is the application at Trumpington Retail Units at Hobson Square. Um, please note this item has been withdrawn from this agenda <clears throat> as the application does not fall within the remit of the Joint Development Control Committee. The application will now be considered by the City's Planning Committee on the 2nd of February 2022, which starts at 10am. 
So, moving on to item two, which is declarations of interest. Please, could councillors indicate if they have any declarations of interest and also identify which report their declaration refer relates to. Um, I can see Councillor Porra. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Just to declare, as I did at the last meeting, that I have a USS pension in abeyance, but I, my discretion is unfettered as it has no bearing on this, but I noticed that they're one of the applicants. Thank you. Councillor Daunton. Um, I'm in the same position uh, with regard to the USS pension. Thank you. And I declare myself to be a member of the Wildlife Trust, which is a subject of our application at item four. Um, but I'm a member, like many other people might be, and I do not consider it to better my decision making on this occasion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Simon Smith. Oh, I don't know whether this counts as an, as an interest, but I have previously carried out consultancy work for the Wildlife Trust. Sorry, when members speak, do feel free to take your Sorry, I beg your pardon. I, I, Simon, yes. you've uh, declared uh, that you're a member of the Wildlife Trust. No, I'm not a oh. member. I've carried out consultancy work for them in the past. Thank you very but much. But it wouldn't affect my district. I can see no yeah. others. So, moving on to agenda item three, just to clarify, members, there are no minutes to approve at this meeting. Um, item four is the deed of variation to S106 agreement country park provisions attached to the outline permissions dated 9th of October 2009, 08 slash out and S0054 08 0 for the Trumpington Meadows development, Hawkston Road. So please, could the Assistant Dir Director of Delivery introduce this item? Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everybody. So I will be introducing this item, but my colleague, Philippa Kelly, will be showing the plans on her screen, and Philippa will, is joining the meeting virtually. So as I go through the item, then the plans should appear on the screen. So Philippa, if you could put the country park plan up on the screen, that would be useful. So... This is a date of variation. It relates to the Section 106 agreement attached to the two outline planning permissions for the whole of the country, for the whole of the Trumpington Meadows development uh, that was approved in October 2009. Since October 2009, uh, the reserved matters for the development have all been approved. Uh, there are large numbers of occupations on the development. The country park to which this deed of variation relates, which is to the western side of the development, and on the coloured up plan that you can see on the screen, um, it's a shaded green area, um, which extends throughout the western part of the development. And then to the northern part of the country park, you can see the allotments and the kickabout area, which are within the city council boundary and which are currently managed by the city council. So the country park elements have been implemented. The country park has been open for some considerable time. The original um, section 106 agreement provided for the wildlife trust to manage the country park on a long leasehold basis, 125 year lease was encapsulated through the original section 106 agreement. The deed of variation in front of us uh, relates to a slight change and it's now proposed that the Wildlife Trust would take on the management and maintenance of the country park on a freehold basis. So the freehold would be transferred from the landowners to the Wildlife Trust. All the other management arrangements would remain exactly the same. Um, the management arrangements are set out in detail in the Country Park Strategy, which is an annex to the original Section 106 agreement. 
the City Council manages components to the northern part of the development, the allotments, and the kickabout area on a 125-year lease, and those management arrangements would continue and are not affected by this deed of variation. Should be noted that the deed of variation uh, is at an advanced stage of drafting, and um, we are just waiting for uh, comments to come through from the Cambridgeshire County Council. So the recommendation is that the Joint Development Control Committee authorise the completion of the deed of variation to the Section 106 agreement with delegated authority to officers to agree the wording, the final wording of the deed of variation. And just to note, it is likely that any changes to wording would be of a legal nature since the main provisions of the agreement have already been uh, drafted. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Just to clarify two things. One is, do we need a proposer and a seconder and then debate? Or do we just discuss? Or do we take member questions? And the second question is, um, could, could Philippa show us the location with a laser pointer of the allotments and the kickabout area? I think, I think I know where they are, but I think it would be helpful if she could show us on the plan. So, um, if Philippa, are you able to just point to the uh, very northernmost tip of the country park uh, with the laser pointer just to show the uh, position of the allotments and the kickabout area? That would be helpful. Thank so you. Sure. Sharon, if I could add, I, I'm not on a PowerPoint presentation, so I can't show a laser point, but hopefully my cursor is shown to be rotating around. We can see your cursor, which is, I imagine, on the allotment area. Is the green triangle below the kickabout area? Yes, I believe it is. That's correct. And uh, Ms Brown, could you just clarify the decision-making process? Do we so, um, in this instance, because um, it's obviously um, a quite um, a short item, uh, I can confirm that you can go straight into the member discussion and take member questions. I would like to ask a question. <laughs> I have one, but yes, Councillor, Pro uh, Councillor Thornborough. Oh. This seems like a very nice uh, proposition. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't know if there's any background about why they've chosen to do, make this, it seems like a very generous offer to provide the freehold. I suspect it's not a material consideration, but it would be interesting if that was available. But my one, my one question is about access to the part which is south of the M11. Does the, tram, does the access route, which I think is a bribeway under the M11, is that included in the, uh, the transfer? Did, so that it, that, because that's a, very, that's a very important part to access from the north to the south, particularly in relation to connecting uh, to, for maintenance. Um, and I, it's just that one little clarification, thanks. My observation is that that's a bridge currently, um, and but but yes, it, we we looked at it in a relation to another application that we viewed. So perhaps um, could you explain, um, Miss Kelly? Um, or or Sharon? Yes, yeah, it's probably <laughs> it's probably me. So um, just touching on the background, the deed of variation first, and why it's come forward. So I think that. Um, Originally, the landowners were minded to retain the country park in their ownership to maintain control um, because at that stage, the outline permissions were granted. Uh, there was obviously uncertainty about the success of any future management arrangements, so they purposefully retained the ownership for that reason. Uh, subsequently, they were able to enter into their lease with the Wildlife Trust 
and the Wildlife Trust has been managing the country park very successfully. So the, lease, the uh, change from leasehold to freehold is a reflection of the success of the Wildlife Trust management arrangements. I think in relation to the, uh, just coming back to the point about the bridge, um, that's not part of the transfer arrangements, that's outside the, the remit of the transfer is my understanding. My feeling is that it's more likely to re be retained within county highways, is it not? That's my understanding from my recollection of the discussions on the original section 186 agreement. Ms Brown. Can, can I come Councillor back? Thornborough, do you come back? Are the Wildlife Trust um, content about access to that southern parcel of land? Um, so yes, they are very familiar uh, with all the details and the access arrangements and um, satisfied with those arrangements as they are. And obviously, they have been successfully managing the country park in relation to those arrangements for a number of years now. Thank you, Ms Brown. Um, can I? Sorry, can I just come back? I just want to say that this is such a, an amazingly successful country park. I know the people in Trumpington who I used to represent really enjoy it, but it's not just the people living in the south of the city, the people in the north regularly go down. So it's a, a real benefit to for all residents and I suspect in South Cambridgeshire too. Thank you. Councillor Porra. Chair. Yeah, I just wanted to check, obviously this will transfer the freehold in perpetuity to the Wildlife Trust which sounds like a positive. In terms of the difference between leasehold and freehold for them, is it going to incur any extra expenses? Because obviously they will have additional liabilities if it's freehold rather than leasehold. And are they comfortable with that? Thanks. So my understanding of what happens separately um, in a separate form of legal agreement between the Wildlife Trust and the uh, landowners was that there is an endowment so there will be an additional endowment that will uh, be transferred across with the freehold to the wildlife trust members um, and uh, councillor smith sorry councillor smart right, sorry. so uh, my only concern is what is the wildlife trust um, and what might it be in the future? So the future is a long time away. Um, and might they change into something else that we don't think about now? So, I mean, you know, they've got Prince Charles, I think, are they in charge at the moment? And they've had criticisms in the past of Chris Packham for not doing stuff the way he likes it. Um, would we be happy with whatever the Wildlife Trust might become in 100 years' time, which is a long time away? You know, they might be something completely different. Um, but they've already to change anything after making this decision today, except within legislation from the state. It's unfortunate the Wildlife Trust aren't here today. But anyway, Sharon, could you answer that? So the Section 106 provisions um, from the original Section 106 agreement um, largely remain the same and there's quite a lot of detail in those provisions and as I mentioned there is an annex that relates to the country park strategy which sets out in some considerable detail the management arrangements and maintenance arrangements so regardless um, those need to be adhered to and any changes would need to be subject to a deed of variation in the way that this change in the management arrangements has been subject to a deed of variation. The Wildlife Trust are named as a body in the deed of variation. Um, so clearly, if there were going to be any changes, uh, that would mean, I don't know, that they wish to uh, transfer the uh, freehold to a different organisation. Um, then that would have to come back uh, through another deed of variation. I don't know whether the legal advisor would like to comment on those points. Ms. 
sorry about that. Um, I think going to a wildlife trust gives uh, added protection. It's going from, um, if I recall correctly, private ownership or company ownership over to the trust. So the trust has got another statutory duty. So I think there's a far better protection for the future of the country park and its management by virtue of trust ownership. Uh, if I may say, uh, as a purely as a member of the Wildlife Trust, um, my understanding is that the Wildlife Trust has been extant for some decades and has always uh, looks after a, a number of um, country parks around the county and in Bedfordshire and um, Beds 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 Camp. Beds, Cambridgeshire and Northamptonshire, uh, and has, has a, um, a trustworthy uh, track record for looking after places of this type for the benefit of the public and for the benefit of the wildlife in, in their care, um, and often engaging with communities to volunteer and help with the work that's done. Um, so I think Personally, I'm, I'm very happy to support this um, because I think it actually will increase the security of the country park uh, in a, it, it, you know, in, incredibly. So, um, with no, oh, some more speakers. Okay, so Councillor Fain. Thank you, Chair. Um, I entirely endorse what you say. I didn't declare earlier that I'm also a member, but I don't regard that as a, a declarable. Um, the question of access, which is, may or may not be a material consideration today. Uh, a lot of people visit this park by car, and of course use the car park for Barron's Pool, which is next door. Some people tend to try and park within Trumpington Estate, which may cause problems for the future. I suspect that in the future also it, it is being used increasingly by the growing population of Hawkston to the south. And it's worth noting that there is no safe uh, pedestrian crossing at the south. People have to run across the A10. And I suspect these may, may be matters that we will have to come back to in the future, but I don't suspect our relevant consideration, material considerations to today. Thank you. And uh, as you say, I think that would come back, and I think that would come to um, as, a, as a highways, a county highways issue. Um, yes, I probably should just talk about the parking situation because I know that that is a live one and these are separate considerations and they would need to uh, be discussed with um, relevant organisations separately, including Cambridgeshire County Council. So on the parking issue and the knock-on implications cumulatively over time in relation to um, parking congestion on the development as a whole, um, originally, uh, the County Council was pursuing a traffic regulation order and that was due to come into effect uh, with the adoption of roads. So, for example, the main primary road is being adopted at the moment and originally it was planned for the traffic regulation order to come into effect at that point. Um, but the uh, County Council is reconsidering that uh, traffic regulation order um, and that's in response to a large number of objections that were received from occupiers of the development so that's um, still under consideration um, and there hasn't been a decision on that direction going forward but these these issues would need to be considered separately. Standing our concerns about parking they're not relevant to this um, uh, what are we calling it, um, the deed of variation, which simply relates to the ownership and the management of the, of the park. So, members, are we ready to go to a vote? Great. Okay. So, those in favour, would you like to show? Oh, by the way, sorry, did anybody see um, Councillor Gawthrop Wood wanting to speak at all? I didn't. Okay. Councillor, are you, we're all, we're voting. Okay. So everybody in support, show of hands, that looks like unanimous. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Okay? Thank you. Members, thank you very much indeed for um, coming in today, because I appreciate it's been a very short, unexpectedly short meeting. But thank you for being here on good time and, and attending the briefing. And I'll call the meeting to a close. Oh, sorry. Yes, before we go, sorry. I correct myself. Just can we go to the um, last item on the agenda? Sorry, before I close the meeting, because we do need to approve the meeting dates, which are item six on the agenda, page 35. Uh, can we just um, confirm that we agree these meeting dates? And can I ask members that if any, if they think they're unlikely to be able to attend on any of those dates, please do let the um, committee coordinator know as soon as possible um, so that we can just be aware of any need to change. Um, yes, Councillor Smart. Sorry, Chair, I put my hand up before you finish speaking. So not to debate now then to speak to the committee chair about it. Correct. Yes, yes. Correct. To, to, yeah. speak, to speak to the committee coordinator. Would it not be useful just to have a chat now as we're here? Oh, well, if you want to. Well, just to say, hopefully none of them are in half terms or anything. Sorry. And secondly, that the one in What did you Sorry, I didn't catch that. Firstly, sorry. that hopefully none of them are in half terms, for example. And the other thing is, I haven't checked. I don't have children at school anymore. And the other thing is that the August one looks a bit awkward because we often people have holidays in August, don't they? Mm. We don't normally have meetings in August. Okay, so the concern about the date in August, which is the 17th, and to check that they're not half terms. Anybody else? Uh, could I just say, Chair, that we, we do normally have a JBCC during August. Okay. Um, so, so every year, I think, I think we've had one. Thank you. Councillor Smith? I will not be able to attend in August. So, not you, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Do you want to turn your microphone on? Nobody else. Right. Okay. So can I just um, take a show of hands that we agree the dates with those caveats? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, with that, members, I'll call the meeting to a close. Thank you for coming and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.